Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation, a second order differential equation. We have d squared y over dx squared equals y plus x cubed. d squared y over dx squared is the second derivative of y with respect to x. You can also think of it as the derivative of the first derivative. So, I'll be presenting two methods, even though the second method will be incomplete. I'll give you some ideas and hopefully you can take it from there. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, first of all, I'm going to replace d squared y over dx squared with y double prime, because that's easier to write, minus y equals x cubed. So what I did was subtract y from both sides. Obviously, if you have y's and we can separate them from the x's, we want to put all the y's on one side and everything else, constants and x values on the other side. Now, this is a non-homogeneous equation because on the right-hand side, we have a function of x, such as x cubed. But to be able to solve this problem with the first method, we're going to look at the homogeneous case first, which is when we replace x cubed with 0. So now this is a pretty easy equation to solve. You know, there's a lot of good materials on this if you search for homogeneous, you know, linear equations. We can basically write this with the differential operator and then from there find the characteristic equation. And you can do, do this in so many ways, but this basically means the second derivative is represented by the big D squared. And then minus, since y is not differentiated, I'm just going to put a 1 there and then apply this to y and that's going to give me 0. Make sense? So this is pretty much the same thing as y double prime minus y. But one of the things that's really good about it is from this differential operator thing, I can directly go to the characteristic equation, which can be written as r squared minus 1 and then set it directly equal to 0. And from here, we're going to find the roots. And once we find the roots, we can kind of write our solution as a linear combination of each solution, which is basically e to the power rx. Okay, so that's the solution for any r value. And then we're going to put those together. Here, we get two r values. If you, you know, however you solve it, you're going to get r equals plus minus one from here. And this is going to give you two particular solutions, y equals e to the power x which is 1 times x, or y equals e to the power negative x, which is negative 1 times x. Make sense? Now, what happens if you get complex solutions? Suppose your characteristic equation was r squared plus 1 equals 0. Then you would still use it, but this, this time it will be something like e to the power ix. And now using Euler's formula, you could turn it into cosine and sine. Make sense? Cool. So with the complex case, it's a little different. Uh, it's going to be trigonometric. Okay, now putting these two together, like making a linear combination of these two things, is going to give us y, and this is going to be our homogeneous solution, y sub h, is going to be c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the power negative x, where c sub 1 and c sub 2 are real coefficients. Okay, so those are our constants or just coefficients. And then we're going to be looking for the general solution because our equation originally is not homogeneous. It is non-homogeneous. So we do need something to take care of this x cubed. Yes, this solution is going to work on this one, but not on that one. So we kind of need to add something to the picture. And that's actually going to be our particular solution, which I can write as y sub p. And y sub p is going to be a polynomial, probably, because I have x cubed on the right-hand side. So I'm looking for something that looks like this, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. In other words, I'm expecting to get something cubic. Now, in some cases, obviously, this doesn't work. For example, if you had secant x on the right-hand side or tangent x, you wouldn't be able to find a particular solution. And you would probably use a different method such as variation of parameters. And I did recently make a video on variation of parameters. If you check it out, you'll see the secant x in the thumbnail. Anyways, if I remember, I'll also share the link with you. So this is uh, the two pieces that we're going to put together because we want to get the general solution. And the thing is, the homogeneous solution is going to work in the non-homogeneous case. Because if you plug it in, it is just going to work, right? Well, 
it is going to give you zero. <laughs> so that's the trick. So we do need x cubed. So let's go ahead and put it this way. The general y solution is going to be the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. Make sense? So we're going to add these two together. Let's go ahead and add them and get our general solution. y is going to be c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. That's a pretty long one, right? But don't worry. We're going to differentiate this. So the first step is finding a candidate for the non-homogeneous solution and then putting these two together and then take the derivatives and plug this into the original equation, which was y double prime minus y equals x cubed. Make sense? Now, why didn't I just look for x cubed? Because we may have x squared, we may have x in the equation. That's going to disappear by differentiation, right? So let's go ahead and plug this into our general non-homogeneous equation, okay? So I'm going to differentiate this once. That's going to give me c sub 1 e to the x minus c sub 2 e to the negative x. We get a negative from the derivative of negative x. And then from here, 3ax squared plus 2b, or not 2b, x, yay, plus c. And then we're going to differentiate this one more time. And when we do twice, the negative is actually going to disappear because we're kind of negating it twice. And then this will give us 6ax and then plus 2b or not 2b. Now, we are supposed to subtract y from y double prime, as you can see here, and then that's supposed to equal x cubed. So let's do it. Take the y double prime, and actually I can uh, copy y here, and so you can kind of directly subtract. y is going to be that. Well, actually, that's going to be too much work. I'm kind of lazy. Sorry about that. Can we just subtract directly? y double prime minus y is going to be x cubed. So let's go ahead and find out c1 e to the x, c2 e to the negative x, plus 6ax, plus 2b, minus, and we're going to go ahead and subtract everything in y, it's going to be minus c1 e to the x, minus c2 e to the negative x, minus ax cubed, minus bx squared, minus cx minus d. Notice that some of these terms are going to cancel out, such as these homogeneous solutions, right? And then we're going to end up with a polynomial. Let's see what that equals. I want to write this first, the highest power, negative ax cubed. And then I do have negative bx squared. And then we have 6ax minus cx, which can be written as 6a minus c times x, right? And then my constant is going to be 2b, or not 2b, minus d. Too much, right? Too much of a good thing. And then finally, Remember, this is y double prime minus y, and that's supposed to equal x cubed. Awesome. We got a polynomial equation, which is very easy to solve, since this is true for all x values in the domain. Then we can safely say that the coefficient of x cubed is supposed to be 1, which means from here a is equal to negative 1. Awesome. Since there's no x squared, this means b is equal to 0. Beautiful. And then... The coefficient of x is must uh, is is must must be zero because there is no x on the right hand side, which means c is equal to six a. But a is negative one, so c is gonna be negative six. Beautiful. And finally, two b or not two b minus d. I know some people are gonna complain. Is supposed to equal zero. From here we get d equals two b, and since b is zero, d is also zero. So what's really important here is that the a value and the c value because others are zero. Make sense? And our solution was written as follows, right? We said that, okay, my solution is going to look like c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x plus the ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus t, which is the cubic polynomial. But a is negative 1, so it's going to be minus x cubed, right? b is 0, c is negative 6, and remember, c is the coefficient of x minus 6x, right? That's going to be the solution, and that's it because d is also 0. Make sense? So this is basically the general solution, and if you don't believe that, you can go ahead and plug it in, and it should work. So our expectations were right because we were expecting a cubic, and we got a cubic, but with a little bit of linear added to the picture. All right? So let me go ahead and introduce briefly what the second method is going to look like, and hopefully you can take it from here. Now the question is, can we use power series? And the answer is, why not, right, all, all the time. So power series, basically, you can write them as uh, using the sigma notation, k equals 0 to infinity, 
a sub k x to the power k. In other words, a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 3x cubed, so on and so forth. And you're going to be differentiating this. Obviously, this is the y value. If you differentiate once, you're going to get a sub 1 plus 2a sub 2x plus 3a sub 3x squared, so on and so forth. Differentiate one more time, you're going to get 2a sub 2 plus 3 times 2, which you can also write as 6a sub 3x, and so on and so forth. So these are going to be like kind of like the product of consecutive numbers, like 2 and 1, 3 and 2, 4 and 3, so on and so forth. But if you do this in the general case, it might be a little easier to handle because that's going to give you a general formula. So what we're going to do next is basically subtract these, y um, double prime minus y, and we're supposed to subtract term by term. For example, this is going to be 2a sub 2 minus a sub 0, the constants first, and then the coefficient of x is 6a sub 3, and then here it's a sub 1, but we're subtracting, so it's supposed to be like that, so on and so forth. And at the end, you're going to set it equal to x cubed. Notice that these are going to disappear because they're supposed to be zero. So from here, you kind of get some relationship between the coefficients and you can just make up one of them or s find all the coefficients in terms of the others. And you could do this, but guess what? It's going to be painful, but the rest is left as an exercise for you because this is kind of too much. <laughs> Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.